Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be just doing a quick little exercise which I thought would be fun. It's recreating uh, Bjark Ingels um, 2016 Serpentine Pavilion in London. I thought it would be a good exercise because it, we can we can combine using um, sub D in Rhino 7. It's also a relatively simple um, grasshopper script. So this will not be like a complex build. I assume this will take like 15 minutes. But um, if you enjoy, please drop a like and subscribe. Um, yeah, so let's go to uh, Rhino. What I'm gonna do is first build the surface geometries. And it's going to be two surfaces that are will be built with sub D. And then we're gonna build a, a grid, which is gonna sort of obey like an AB patterning, like a checkerboard, so AB, AB. Um, grid that is going to project onto either one or the other um, surface to generate where the um, extruded boxes will go. And then step three is we're going to project those points onto the correct surface and create those extrusions um, in that as well. So those are the three um, processes that we're going to go through. Okay, so first, so here I am now in Rhino. And we're going to, here, let's go over to the um, sub D tools and we're gonna grab one of these simple sub D surfaces. And here you can click vertical because we're gonna, obviously it's vertical surfaces. Um, to be honest, I'm just gonna kind of do this roughly. I'm not really going to worry about a very like uh, accurate representation of it because I don't think that's very important. It's just generally, let's get the overall proportions down um okay so let's so now that we have this we're we're gonna need two but let's quickly um so looking at this project it seems to that one of the surfaces is the one on the back side of this all it does is straight at the top and bulges at the back and then the other one almost seems identical to it just these this corner has been pulled out so here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna create that back surface first. So um, control shift to drag out this point. And then if we go to tab, we're gonna see that we get the um, the soft mode. And actually, you know what? It's already uh, looking pretty good. Um, let's, so I think we're gonna need some more. So what I'm gonna do here is con uh, control shift, shift, double click to get the edge loop. I'm gonna insert another edge in here and let's just bring it down um, here. And let's control shift click on that vertice and let's drag this over to kind of get that um that hump and maybe we're gonna drag this up to smooth it out a little bit and then what we're gonna do we need to sort of the let here let's just solve these grab these control shift and drag and click on each of these vertices and then what you can do is type increase to keep those so now when i go using tab go into the soft mode those maintain in the same exact spot. So looking at back this, I do think we need to add a couple more subdivisions to get it more um, accurate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna um, take these guys and then insert edge. Actually, watch it. So if I do that, I'm not gonna, here, wait, I'll guide you through. So if I do this, I can put one here and then I can do it on the other side, but I don't know exactly where I put. So a better thing, control Z, um, go back, not that far back, is actually you can control shift, double click on this and then insert edge and then click on B for both sides and then do something like this. So you can offset it quite a bit. And now what I was going to do with that is take these and these and actually have, let's do this. I wanna bring them back this way. And actually let's simply, um, let's simply do set PT, set point. And this little menu is gonna pop up and what you're gonna do is, so we're working, I wanna set all these points. So def, I don't wanna change their Z, I wanna change the, so R, for red and G, so in the Y, I want to set their Y direction. So I'll uncheck, uncheck X, so it's only selecting, and then I click OK, and then I can click on this, and it's going to change all those vertices to have that exact same Y. And then I'll just scale out a little bit. Um, and now when I click Shift, oh, I accidentally undid my um, 
my creases. So let's just redo that. Let's crease. Crease. Okay. It's looking pretty good. I think that's uh, good enough. Maybe. I mean, maybe we can uh, actually. Yeah, let's exaggerate this a little bit. Let's really pull that out. Okay, so there, so there we have. Now, now we need to create that second surface, which I'm going to um, do with. I'm I'm figuring if I should mirror it. So actually, what you'll see is that if I just um, Alt drag. Actually, yes, we're gonna do this. So what what I'm gonna do is actually take take these and then do set um, PT, same in Y, and I'm gonna set it along here. So now we're back at that, this surface, and now I'm going to move this one to be aligned with here. And then, or no, sorry, I shouldn't do that yet. Cause then uh, I'm gonna take, I don't want this edge loop anymore. So I'm, and then I'm gonna take these two guys and then zoop them out like that. And actually I'm thinking maybe I don't want these either. Let's see what that does. Um, and then now if I move this back over to here, I mean, I think that's a pretty good um, approximation. Of course you could add, add, for example, another here, isolate if you wanna edit this cause they're overlapping. And then if you wanna like insert another edge to um to sort of refine that but i definitely don't want to do both sides should i do this no i think it's okay i think i think it's okay okay so let's so now that we have these two surfaces i'm going to um change the display color to be let's just do blue and then dark blue for this one so now so now we have so now this is basically step number one we are gonna to want to end up doing this, which is we're gonna want um, a copy of them. So let's, to to draw the lines between, because as, as you can see um, here, the the thickness of these boxes, so we're, we're defining the outer surface of this and the inner one, and you can see that it's not a consistent um, thickness. It's actually, there's actually sort of a little variety. So I'm gonna create a second set of surfaces to represent the other edge of the boxes and and this will is where we'll get our variety okay so i just did control or alt and drag them over so now look so now we have these two and these two and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to manipulate the, this interior one a little bit just to get some more um, variety in it so i'm going to take these two vertices and drag them in a little bit um, I know in the bottom that this this here, which we if we go back to the plan, um, is there a, an underside looking? Uh, but I know these extrusions in the back are really long, so I want to make sure that here they're see they're quite long. So I want to make sure that surface back there really exaggerates that. So I'm going to grab this. If I tab, I can now just drag this here. So now you can see I'm going to be able to take that and actually end up getting that thickness uh, that that we want. Um, let's just take this, grab this guy out a little bit. Um, yeah, so I think that's good. I think that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, okay, cool. So let's let us let let's start out. Let's go into Grasshopper now. What we're going to do is oh I have it here. Okay. So first, so not so first thing. So now that I have these surfaces, I am, I'm going to bring them in as um, sub D. I'm going to maintain the parametric abilities of these surfaces so that um, so that I can manipulate these sub Ds and have an overall and the end result manipulating as well. So we can create like different varieties of um, of the same like Bjork angles. Uh, uh, pavilion okay so what i'm going to do is so so i've brought in these two sub d's these are representing the same surfaces either side of where those points are going to be but i need to first so that that step number one is defining these surfaces which i can bring into grasshopper here 
Now step number two is where I need to build this grid and then define the patterning. So what I'm gonna to do to build, I don't really wanna build another surface um, to represent where the grid will be because the grid is going to be aligned on the red axis, which is R in RGB. So the first one, which is the X axis. That's how I remember. Um, and a little nice little tip. Anyway, so I need a grid on the X axis that's gonna intersect. So what is a way that I can do this? I'm thinking that I could use one of these surfaces, that one, for example, and grab the um, uh, the bound or the bounding box of it and use actually this bounding. Actually, let's just grab this one to have it be consistent. And I think I can use one of these flat surfaces as the actual grid generator. I know I could do it on the grid, um, the, the, these surfaces, but I'll, I'll just, I want to make it create an isolated. Um, so now we're going to deconstruct um, rep, B rep, bring this in here. It's going to have six sides. So let's grab the one that we want. Um, and let's hide these guys. So I think that's the one. Oh yeah, that is the one on the inside. Plus um, we'll reveal the next ones. So not those. Yes, number two is the surface I want because I want it to be this guy here. So actually I, I can just, uh, you can use the data plugin. So now I can hide this. And now I have this surface, which is totally parametric. So I can go and scale these. Um, let's just, you know, I can, I can scale these and that will always um, accurately define um, that, that be that grid. So now what I'm gonna do is use um, in Lunchbox the, um, the panel. And I'm just gonna use the simple quad panels. And so let's, okay, so let's bring this into here because I wanna generate this grid of points. And I'm, and if, as you're gonna see, I'm going to use the center of this, of each one of these panels. I could have just divided this surface. And there's, by the way, there's a million ways to do this. This is not like the end all be all for, um, this is just one method, which I'm trying to do relatively simply. Um, so let's do like 30 and like 31, or let's bring that down. So for the U and V um, dimensions. Okay. So now we're defining these panels and it's gonna output a series of just quad surfaces so you just as you can see here there's 770 actually let's let's uh bring that down a little bit just so i don't have to it's not gonna lag okay so there's now 540 surfaces now let's take this area and we're now we're, now we can get the centroid the central point so as you can see here the workflow is that i've now made a grid that i'm going to be able to project onto each of these surfaces individually and then create the geometries that are residing inside of the two um, like bounding surfaces, the little sandwiches. Okay, so now, but the one thing I do need to do is I need to break this up into that AB um, checker pattern. And I, and as long, so this, as long as I keep this a um, odd number, so 27 rather than 26, what you're going to see here is if I take the center points and put it into here, and this pattern is always like A, B, true, false. Um, here, let's just put these guys into point containers so we can clearly see how this is going to um, separate. Okay, you can see that immediately. So as long as this is an odd number, it's going to align. It'll, it'll give you the checker. The second you make that an even number, as you can see, it's going to, um, it's not going to be that checker pattern. And it's just the way that it's sort of, you could, it is a little bit more work, of course, to be able to make that always um, checkerboard pattern, but I don't think it's uh, worthwhile. I think I even counted on um, on the, on the uh, Bjork and Gilson project, and they even had uh, an odd number of um, services. So they probably just use this exact same um, method. Okay, so, so now that we have this A and B point container, which is great, we're gonna want to now project this onto each of these surfaces. So let's 
so so we've so we've clearly defined our grid so which we can like hide up in here now what we need to do is um, project we're going to do the project along because we can find um, the uh, angle which is going to be y or negative y i think anyway so let's so let's take these points this container project so this is the points to project this will be the direction and this will be the geometry to project onto so i'm going to project onto this object and let's which you can see Oh, it's so I need so I need to first define also the d direction. Let's see if I'm going to need to put y or negative y. Okay, so I need to also put negative. So y negative y, bam. Okay, so now we point projected it onto the first surface, and now we're also going to just uh, control C, control V, and do this onto the second surface. So now we're going to have these points defining that. And I'm actually just going to hide these for now. And actually hide these for now. Okay, so great. Now, so now, so now we know where we, can, we need to put our geometry, which is really simply along those, um, in between those two points, along a, a vector between those two points. Okay, and I'm actually going to make a vector. Well, we can make a line. You can use the line components. That's simple. And you can see, now, so this will be the length of each of these, maybe more mathematically. And um, simply, you can just make a uh, two-point vector, which we'll just do because um, you can do either one. It's the exact same. Um, turn this back on. Let's preview off the line. Just delete that. I believe this will be um, quicker computationally, like actually um, solving that within Grasshopper. So it's always nicer just to use uh, vectors rather than geometry. Hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna want to, now I need to actually move, um, now I need to define the boxes all along that, those lines. So I need to somehow find a way to move these panels which you can see here, I need to find a way to move these panels um, to the correct spot. So what I'm going to do, and, and I also need to sort these panels. So I'm gonna just gonna copy this dispatch. And now of course it's not gonna be points, so I can delete that, but it is gonna have that right. Um, let me just put a geometry node and another geometry node. And we can see that, so just to define the correct um, geometries, and so we're taking the top one, so this guy. Um, and we need to move that, move to point. So we're gonna take this geometry, point to move from, we're gonna take its center, center, point to move from, and then point to move to, which should be, um, This. And bam, here, let's, let me uh, hide these, hide this. And actually, I'm gonna hide these subdivisions as well. And look at that. So now we've moved the geometry there and we have the vector that defines that length between this point and this point between the two surfaces. So now we can simply extrude, um, I think along a surface or a curve, extrude, extrude linear, along a straight path let's just see if we can just do this so we're gonna this will ask for of course here um the curves or surface and that's defining the distance which is a vector so of course it'll work let's hide this so now as you can see we basically have um the right geometry and it's when it's working out wonderfully um i i do know that the Bjerk and Grinchel Bjerk angles does not have this um, these ends, so let's just get rid of them. Here, let's um, deconstruct the wrap again. It's so in this. Um, so 
So now it's going to come out, and each one's going to have six. Yeah, so it's going to have a series, and each B rep has six sides to it. We're only going to need four of those sides. So let's just break it apart. So you can see item number zero, which is I. It's going to be one of the ones we don't want. Let's see which one the other ones we don't want. And I think it was number five that we don't want. So now, so see how we've just got the six branches. And we're, we're just going to want, I think the central four. So now if I turn this off. Yep. And now we, beautiful. So now we have just those four sides and we can join that B rep. And now we have each one of these uh, individual B reps preview this off um, and then let's in this okay so this again using meshes is always easier than using um, than using uh, nerve surfaces like V reps or poly surfaces so and I know that when I when I extrude these to add a little thickness to them there is going to be um, it's gonna get a little the it's gonna get a little heavy so I'm just gonna create these into um, simple meshes so these are just gonna be a bunch of simple four uh, meshes with four faces that I can easily um, offset offset mesh let's see if it's the right direction nope they're overlapping so let's just do uh, if you type this little um, quotation and then minus one that will get perfect so now it's in the right direction awesome okay anyways so now we have just a bunch of meshes that are the correct thing so now let's quickly do the other side which is going to be a simple um basically a copy and paste using different um different uh just coming from these different nodes so control c control v Bring that down here. We're gonna to need to first off reference um, our two other sub Ds. So here we need to go over to Rhino, type in show, and, and be sure to correctly guess the order of these. So you have the interior here and then the exterior. So over here, I'm gonna do this one, the exterior, and then the interior, set one sub D. So now we have these two sub Ds. I think. Um, yep. Okay. Perfect. So now we know we're just going to need to basically plug those into where um, these are going. So this sub D was connecting to. So we just basically need to replace that one to here, and this one to here, and then we're going to need just to replace. Um, so this point is connecting to, I just need to put it into these two project points. So this one into this project, and this one into this project, and then simply swap out the, um, the this, so this geo is going into the area to get, and then the movement, so this, this one needs to go into the area, and this one into the move to point. Now, if I turn this off, we should, have a perfectly unzipped, uh, perfectly unzipped um, uh, serpentine, and let's of course do a custom preview and add a shader um, swatch, color swatch. Let's just do this to light blue. Turn this off. Copy this. And switch this one to be a little bit darker blue. And bam, we have we have the Serpentine Pavilion right there, folks. Um, of course, we can tweak this now. The thing is, is that once you make something, it's not done. You now you have all the control in the world over those parameters, specifically these ones, which I will highlight. Right there. So these are, of course, the the number of divisions, and I remember toning them down. So let's bump this up. Let's, like, for example, put this at thirty, and 
I mean, it looks it looks quite good. I mean, look at compared to here. Let's bring up uh, where's like that well known image. Let's put that over here and this here. Already know that mine isn't gonna be as nice, but come on, where did? Basically, basically. And if, and if the amazing part is too, that don't forget that if we just go back to show and I'm gonna bring this back and make this big again, I can very quickly manipulate these um, here. So control shift, click on this edge and this edge. Maybe I'm wanting to, you know, accentuate a little bit. It'll take a second, of course, for uh, grasshopper to adjust, but but it adjusts to that. So, so for example, maybe, maybe, let, maybe this will be interesting. Maybe if I take those two points and those two vertices and move them to here, it's gonna take a second to adjust. But you can see how quickly with sub D we can we can experiment with all sorts of different. Uh, with all sorts of different forms. Maybe bring these guys uh, back a bit. Uh, let's go to render. And there you are, folks. You have uh, Bjorkingel Serpentine. Pavilion. I think that was a quick little video. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, like and subscribe, please. Uh, it's always helpful, you know, on the channel. Um, and thank you very much. Have a good day. Enjoy your weekend.